So I'm here to tell you uh, about what you learned this weekend. Wow! Is everyone excited? Did you all have a good time this weekend? Okay. So first things first, I'm a liar. It's actually a 15-minute talk. Um, second things, I want to tell you about a really good friend of mine. Does anyone know who this is? It's Emilio Estevez. Juan, come up here for a second and tell him a joke. We have one more joke to end off the day, and then I'll tell you about HackCon. Hey, everyone. Hey everyone, I'm Juan. I'm the Mexican Commissioner for Major League Hacking. And I'm really happy to see Mexican organizers here. Um, Mexican organizers. Yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> so, for the Mexican organizers, ¿cómo le dices a Esteban Esquivez cuando lo va a atrapar la policía? Emilio Arrestevez! What? Oh! Thank you, Juan. <laughs> So, for those of you who haven't heard of him, Emilio Estevez, really important dude from the 90s, really important. Um, there's also something else really important happening this weekend uh, called HackCon. Uh, unfortunately, the internet is sometimes wrong. So, let's talk about some data real quick. So, there was a lot of social media stuff going on this weekend. I saw all of you tweeting, all of you Facebooking. We blew up the internet. It was pretty fantastic. If you can't read that, it says 500,000 reach for the HackCon hashtag, 2 million timeline deliveries, uh, about 800 tweets. Uh, Josh Bear loves us too. Thanks, Taylor. Where are you? Day yeah. One. That was and Oh, by the way, that was just day one. Uh, so we had a huge reach in one day. Uh, in large part, thanks to this man right here, Kurt. The, uh, woo! Give him a round of applause. The director of Platypuses and Social Media at Major League Hacking, uh, who was live tweeting quite a bit of this conference. So, what about HackCon? We had 230 organizers from 91 schools. Let that sink in for a minute. That's amazing. There was a huge diversity of events represented here. Uh, and I hope that, you know, regardless of whether your event was big or small, whether you're a veteran or a newbie, that you learn something really important. We also had six, uh, six countries represented, which is a huge global reach. We also ate 200 pounds of pig. Yep. Uh, a lot of fruit. Unfortunately, Nick did not get his kale chips because they were out of stock. Um, and when we're talking about all the food and all the crazy stuff we had here for you, I want to thank Lee in particular because she was running around the whole weekend cleaning up after you, making sure everything was good. Uh, and not only Lee, but the whole MLH team who just came out of a two-day long, 12-hour-a-day summit to pick up your garbage. So give them a round of applause. So what did we learn at HackCon? Well, we had seven hours of amazing talks. We had 15 fantastic discussions. And we had seven amazing sponsors. Who were those sponsors? Yell them out. Julia. Woo! A16. Teal. Challenge Post. Clara Perkins. Brand Makers. General Catalyst. Livestream. Whoa, whoa. Look at all those amazing sponsors. Give them a round of applause. That was great. Thank them. Because if you didn't realize, uh, two nights and five meals in New York City cost way more than $100 a person. So definitely thank them quite a bit because they made this whole thing possible. We also had some great swag. We had 250 moleskins and a half kilometer of scarves. That's a lot of scarf. We also had a lot of bad jokes. One rap battle, which was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Shamir and Pav. And two fantastic wake-up calls. Who got woken up by Nick? Woo! Yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, all joking aside, um, what's after HackCon, right? How do we continue this experience into the future? So the first thing is the HackCon Facebook group. Uh, how many of you are part of the Facebook group already? Great, quite a few. For those of you who aren't, it's a secret Facebook group for hackathon organizers. Why is it secret? We're all about openness. Well, 
It's secret because there are things that organizers sometimes want to talk about not in the public eye, like terrible sponsors or how you deal with your school's administration or a myriad of things that deserve to be talked about with other organizers but not with the larger community. So if you are registered for HackCon, we will invite you to that group. If you are a larger community hackathon organizer, you are also welcome to join that. Just ask someone who's in the group. So that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, I would like everyone here who learned something or had a great experience to write about it. And don't just write about the conference. It's not like a marketing thing. Write about what you learned. Share that knowledge with the larger world. And ultimately, uh, try to create a more sustainable resource for the type of knowledge that you had this weekend in such a concentrated group of people. Uh, if you want, ever want to publish any of that on the MLH blog, we're happy to be your platform and spread that out. Uh, and keep talking, right? You started a lot of fantastic conversations this weekend. We had discussion groups, we had lunches, we had dinners, we had late night shenanigans. Uh, continue those conversations after HackCon. They don't have to happen in person, right? There's a lot of other mediums for talking to other organizers. And contribute to the guide. Um, the guide is meant to be an open resource, right? Anyone can contribute. We want to have multiple viewpoints in there. Go up there, submit a pull request. We want to evolve and grow as the community learns more about itself. We had four pull requests this weekend. Woo! <laughs> Hashtag HackCon uh, for all your social media lovers like Kurt. Uh, also, all of the videos from the conference will be uploaded to MLH.TV uh, later this week. So if you, didn't, if you have someone who didn't make it or you want to rewatch a talk, they'll all be up there. Uh, and thanks to Livestream for handling all of our AV. Let's give them a round of applause back there. <laughs> they did a kick-ass job. They hosted us in their amazing, beautiful venue. Uh, and they really supported us throughout. So thank them a lot. So what are our takeaways from HackCon? Bam. Uh, so we learned a lot this weekend, right? And we want to have some concrete takeaways and things to think about going forward. Uh, and there's a lot, of, a lot of content this weekend. I'm sure, as you saw, we had seven hours of talks. But there are a couple things that I, I saw as larger trends to the discussions that were going on this weekend. So the first thing is focus on what your community cares about. When you start a hackathon, it's really easy to fall into the trap of emulating everyone who came before you, right? It's comfortable, there's resources available, but ultimately it's up to you to figure out the best way to serve your local hacker community. And that's gonna look different on every campus and every region for every club. And so you need to actually talk to the people at your school, talk to your hackathon attendees, figure out what they care about, right? Uh, it's okay if everyone is catering to a slightly different group of people, right? Don't get too comfortable. Um, we've had a lot of talk this weekend about the right way to scale, uh, how you can innovate on the format, how you can kind of create uh, new takes on hackathons, increase the branding, make it more awesome. But ultimately what I mean by this is hackathons need to be sustainable not only in funding, but also in concept, right? Uh, it's great that you know a quarter of our population turns over every year when they graduate and you have new people coming in, but in order to make this sustainable for decades, you really have to think about how to create something that's gonna provide lasting value year over year to people regardless of where they are in that pipeline, right? Whether they're a freshman just learning to code or a senior who's about to get their job, your events and your community need to cater to everyone uh, probably in very different ways, right? So there are, and, and it's not always going to be a monolithic solution as well. I mean, it might involve having sub-communities within your larger school. So definitely think about it. Definitely don't take things for granted that exist currently. Uh, Swift made a great reference earlier that the science fair didn't exist more than two years ago, and now everyone wants to do it, right? Uh, this community tends to have a very short memory and so the things that we're doing now might be the standard in a year, but we have no way of knowing unless we try them. Next thing, inclusivity is a mindset. Uh, there have been a lot of great discussions this weekend, a lot of great talks about how to make the community more welcoming, more inclusive. 
but ultimately, there's not a single fix. There's not a band-aid for this problem. You have to think about it and be conscious about it through every step of the process of building your community on campus and creating your events, right? Uh, this is not something that we are going to say, hey, MLH is rolling out this new Inclusivity 2.0 platform and now every event is inclusive, right? That's not how it works. You all have to think about it day to day in every step of your hackathon organizing process. Otherwise, we're not really going to make any progress. And more importantly than that, you need to measure it. Uh, your gut feeling is often incorrect. So measure your success here. Really collect data about what you're looking at and how your community is changing over time. And the last thing I want you to take away is have fun, right? Uh, none of us got into this. None of us started organizing events because we wanted to be like all like, oh, I'm like super hackathon organizer person. I wear a suit and I like have sponsor meetings. I'm all cool and professional, right? Like that's not what this is about. Um, we got into this because we loved it and we got a lot out of it as participants and we wanted other people to have that experience too. And you need to not forget that this is a fun thing, right? Like, we are uh, a group of young people who have access to probably more money than we really should have access to, <laughs> to just like create playgrounds for developers. And you need to enjoy it and you need to have fun with it. And you need to constantly be thinking about how to maintain that for yourselves. Because I could tell you like, after having done this for five years, if you don't have fun with it after a little while, you're not gonna wanna do it anymore. So definitely ha continue to have fun. Don't get too crotchety in your old age. So uh, there are a couple more people who made HackCon possible uh, who don't work for MLH. Many of them don't even organize hackathons anymore and are just kind of ingrained in the fabric of the community. And I want to thank them as well because they put a ton of hours into this. So uh, Alexei, who you saw give that hilarious talk the other day. Um, Alexei, <laughs> woo, go Alexei. Alexei uh, was working on HackCon from various destinations around the world. I believe part of the time he was in Costa Rica, part of the time he was in, uh, what was it, Bali or something? Head Bali. Yep, he's heading to Bali now. He was all over the world organizing HackCon with us. It was fantastic. Usually we'd get messages from him at two in the morning. Um, really smart guy. Uh, definitely one of the people I respect most in this community. Um, he's definitely been a mentor to Swift and I as well. Uh, Ishan. Where's Ishan? Ooh. Ishan has probably, uh, is probably one of the people who thinks most outside of the box about hacker communities and how to put on great events. He's done a lot of crazy shit. Uh, you should talk to him about some of it. A lot of it is just taken for granted now, but he invented a lot of the practices that we use currently in organizing hackathons. Really smart dude. Nick, where's Nick? I don't, I don't know what this photo is. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was some, something, it was kind of the first photo that popped up on Facebook. Nick looks really unhappy. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, Nick has uh, been involved in this community for quite a while now. Uh, he has poured an immense amount of work into HackCon, reviewing all the talks, uh, giving all of you speaking training, making it a huge success. And so Nick is amazing. Yeah. He also came up with the idea for HackCon, by the way. Uh, and last but not least, Dan Schlosser, who is... <laughs> uh, important note, I don't know when this photo was taken, but Dan's wearing the same shirt right now. And wait, not only that, but the tablecloth matches the shirt. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Dan, is, uh, Dan is one of those people who, as I'm sure you noticed in his talk, is not tied in to the traditional idea of hacker culture or hackathons, right? Dan and all of the people at ADI are creating some really amazing movements at their school, and we should be talking to them and we should be learning from them. And I think most importantly, they're catering to what their students need, right? They're creating something that's really amazing on their campus. So thank you, Dan. Cool. Oh, and one more thing. Ah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, so, uh, that was HackCon. Um, 
I hope you all had an amazing experience. I hope you all got a lot out of it. I hope that a lot of the connections you made here will continue far into the future and that you'll go back to your schools and evangelize what you've learned to the other students, to the other organizers. How many people would come back? Yeah, that's like probably like, you know, 90% or something. I don't really know. I can't count. Um, quick, quick poll again. How many people do you think are sitting in this room right now? Just yell it out. 300. <laughs> I heard 400. Um, I also heard 50. Uh, pro tip, hackathon organizers can't count. Um, <laughs> biggest hackathon ever. The most epic hackathon ever. Um, but, but seriously, but seriously, I hope you all had an amazing time, and I hope that we will all see you again in July.